Hello and welcome to the Inderati studio live at the European Utility Week. My name is Sophia and today I'm joined by Oliver Rapp, Executive Director of the Building Performance Institute Europe. Hello Oliver, how are you? Hello Sophia, I'm very well, thank you. Brilliant, so let's start this interview. Um, why are buildings so important in the energy system? If you look at uh, all the sectors we have in our economy, in our society, transport, industry, buildings, agriculture, it's buildings which consume most of the energy in Europe. 40% of the final energy consumption goes into buildings mm -hmm. and they cause 36% of the CO2 emissions. And that's why they are very important in this whole energy system and climate change debate. Okay, so do you see changing roles for business in the energy system? Um, buildings are definitely experiencing a change because there is a completely new set of technologies everything that has to do with the internet with digitalization with smartness are having an impact on the building sector um, buildings change their role up from relatively simple end devices consuming energy so in the past buildings simply just were supplied with heating or cooling energy mm -hmm. and with electricity and they now turn into uh, systems which also produce energy because we have more and more photovoltaics, for example, on the roof. We have heat pumps implemented in buildings. So they have a much more dynamic interaction with the energy system. In addition, the new technologies allow us to steer the demand of energy mm -hmm. in a building, to modulate that. And uh, with that whole digitalization, it allows us to control that remotely. So buildings all of a sudden become active micro energy hubs, moving away from this relatively dumb end use facility to be very proactive uh, and smart interacting entities. Okay, so we speak a lot about intelligent and smart building. Do you think this is just a buzzword uh, at the moment or do you think is there actually a credible concept behind it? Well, I think it is definitely uh, a buzzword which is picked mm. up by the industry but also by policy makers. But I see more and more industry players turning this buzzword into a real business case. Okay. And I think that's where the opportunity lies. And in addition, um, if we look at forthcoming regulation, the European Union will table what they call a winter package on energy policies which will include many different elements. It will include uh, new regulation for building efficiency, new regulation for renewable energy, but it will also include a market design initiative, mm -hmm. which essentially means that the policymakers in Brussels have understood that all these things play together and that they find their logical and technical home in buildings. So what used to be a buzzword is now being turned in real policy action and is turned into business action because the many companies which exhibit here at this uh, great fair realize that there is a real business case and they are making respective business offers. So we definitely see a change. Okay, so and uh, what kind of policies do we need to support, um, sorry, what kind of policy do we need to support intelligent buildings? Well, we, we need a set of policies. Um, I just talked about this winter package which mm -hmm. is going to come out, which will have a lot of different dossiers. What we need to ensure is that the different dossiers from the Renewables Energy Directive, the Buildings Directive, this Market Design Initiative, that there is a consistency across all these regulations which enable smart buildings to really be built as new buildings or which also enable that future and deep renovation of buildings make existing buildings smarter. So we need to make sure that the market design initiative, for example, sets the right price signals for end consumer to have an interest in modulating, in, in steering their demand so that they consume energy, for example, when it's cheaper. That means we need to have intelligent appliances. Mm -hmm. But we also need to have price transparency. We need to have uh, market access for all the building owners um, to really participate in that. At the same time, we need the buildings directive to make sure that these buildings are really highly efficient. Because a smart building which is not highly efficient is leaking with energy and therefore it's not smart anymore. Mm. So a precondition for a smart building is actually a highly efficient building. 
And so all these different dossiers which are going to come out um, at the end of the year need to have a consistency across to make sure that smart buildings will be the future built reality. Okay, so I have a question. When do you think that intelligent building could actually be a reality? Well, we have intelligent buildings on the market already today. Um, of course, they have right now only a tiny market exactly. share. Some pioneering companies are offering them, some pioneering investors are investing in them. But if we want to see uh, a mass market penetration of these smart buildings, we need this enabling policy Policies. framework I, I just talked about. But we also need financing mechanisms. We need investor confidence in these technologies. And therefore, it's very important that the companies offer really solid business cases. Okay, and so we have time for a last question. We are here, of course, at the European Utility Week. Um, why did you come here to meet who and what are you looking forward uh, as a key takeaway as well? Well, my organization, which I'm leading, BPIE, we are a, a, a non-profit think tank. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a specific business interest. We are uh, advising governments and uh, industry stakeholders about uh, effective policy development and effective policy implementation in the field of energy in buildings. Mm -hmm. So I'm here, well, first of all, I will chair a session in the afternoon, but I'm okay. also here, of course, to meet many other stakeholders, to have a lot of conversations and, and to pick up ideas, but also to plant ideas, uh, what we need to do to improve the whole enabling policy framework in that field. And also, not only with the focus on Brussels, but also with the focus on the European countries, the European member states, because this is in the end where all these Perfect. policies will have to be implemented and where the business cases are happening. Perfect. Thank you very much, Oliver, for taking the time to do this interview. And to you, <laughs> feel free to check our YouTube uh, channel on Injerati. Thank you. Goodbye.